don't like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? The blackest dies. Who is God? Come on! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Skewered Universe podcast. The healthy, nutritional option for all your podcast needs, guaranteed to give you a healthy bowel movement whenever you need it. I am your host, Jeff. And I'm Leanne. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) I don't know. I felt like saying something goofy at the beginning. I'm in a good mood. Things are running along. I mean, I know we haven't recorded for a bit, but... Are things running along in your bowels? Yeah, healthy movements all around. Okay, good. (laughs) Enough poop talk. (laughs) (laughs) So our last show was our year-end review and kind of looking back at where we started. Yeah. And I think 2022 is going to be a fresh start. Definitely. We're kicking it off well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yes. Woohoo! Well, I had some uh, podcast meetings earlier in the day that I'm excited for. Yeah, Won't say well, anything now. You've got a couple of things going on. Yes. Yeah. A three-part special coming up with Patrick French, who you guys have all heard before. Go back and listen to our two episodes on Midsummer. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm excited to bring that to you guys and then uh, earlier today I was put in touch with another podcast host. And we're working on some things that we're going to be doing together in the near future. So that's exciting. It is the year of Skewered Universe. So you know what you have to do? Like Rick and Morty would say, it's time to get swifty. Take off your pants. Shit on the floor. We're back to the poop talk. Okay, anyway. (laughs) How have you been, Leanne? Fantastic. (laughs) Good movements. Everything's working properly. (laughs) I mean, I am a little bloated, but, you know, it's because I had another gallbladder attack, so that was fun. It started at work, and I knew immediately what was happening. I had to leave work early. I'm like, look, guys, I gotta go. This is about to get really bad. (laughs) Yeah. And then I kind of recovered, and then since then, I've been eating fatty foods, because I'm just like, fuck it. Torture me. <laughs> Torture me, gallbladder daddy. Ugh. No. So, yeah, no. I've been eating some burritos, and I'm a little bloated. But other than that, you seem okay. You seem yeah. in good spirits. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we want here. We've been uh, watching some movies. Yeah, and I've actually been keeping track of new movies since the start of the new year. Oh, yeah? In my letterboxed account. Okay. Which I'm showing you on my phone that nobody can see. Yeah. So that's been good. I'm hoping by the end of the year I can kind of do a mini retrospective of how many films I saw how that all are new to me that I haven't seen yet. That's what I want to use this for. Anything that we or we collectively have not seen, mm-hmm. like for the show, I'm going to put in there so we can kind of look back and maybe talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, what I liked, what I didn't like, and... Yeah, maybe, you know, it's a possibility, but that's 300 and some odd days away. Yeah, well, you know, because I work graveyard shift, I'm up late at night, and so it was the weekend, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to watch a couple of movies. And so I decided to put on a couple of horror films that I got off of TikTok. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I like TikTok. Get over it, folks. (laughs) Anyway, so... (laughs) One of them, one of them was called 1922. 
the Stephen King movie, correct? Yes. I'm I'm playing like I don't know that we just watched. We it literally yet. We just, just watched, watched it. it. <laughs> that is not what we're talking about here tonight, folks. No, but it's it's a segue. Yeah, it's a segue. It was. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I figured you would. I had heard about it when it first hit Netflix, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll get to it. And then it's one of those that just slipped through the cracks. As they usually do. The good ones usually do that. Yeah. But then the other one was what we're going to be today. Right now. And give a quick tease. What What is this movie called? It's called The Platform. The Platform, you say? Yeah, and it's not about social media. Oh, thank fucking God. <laughs> It's, um, it's, it explains everything in the first half an hour. It explains everything that's going on. So once you get into it and start watching it, you'll be like, oh, okay, this is what's happening. Okay. It's definitely horror. It's definitely gory. It's definitely a psychological thriller. Um, says a lot about society and human nature and yeah. Yeah. Okay, sounds it sounds very interesting. I'm up for it. Yeah, I really I really liked it. I watched it and then I had to make you watch it. Yeah, because originally we were talking about maybe doing the new Candyman. Yeah, and I think we'll do that for one of the upcoming episodes. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, but I saw this one called The Platform. I'm like, okay, I was like you decide which one. Mm-hmm. I gotta run some errands. When I come back, let me know. And you, we had it between the platform and 1922. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what was the other movie? Now, Candyman mm-hmm. and 1922. And then when I came back, you said the platform. Yeah. It's like okay, cool. Your choice. Let's do it. I said let's just put on 1922 just for funsies. And I'm glad you had me watch it. Yeah, it was good. It. I mean, it's my third time seeing it now. <laughs> It's good for ambiance. Yeah. Good musical score. I just like that it's something a little bit different from Stephen King. It's not your typical... So where were we? Oh, yeah, I appreciate that 1922 wasn't your typical kind of Stephen King fare. There was... There's obviously his touches through it. You know, the, the returning ghosts... Things of that nature. But it wasn't all the way through that. It was more about the paranoia and mental breakdown after what this guy did and what he was going through and how it tore his... What happened was tearing his family apart and tearing his mental well-being apart. Yeah. So the ghosts in that didn't play a huge part. They were just there as like, this is more of your mental breakdown, the guilt you're carrying, the sin you're carrying. So I like that. It wasn't it wasn't like it where everything is very much up front. This is scary shit happening and people will die from it. Yeah. It was a little more pulled back. It was more you're going to witness the breakdown of this guy and yeah, there's some there's some gruesome looking ghosts in here and lots of rats. Yes. Some of them were so adorable. Decent amount of gore, which I love. Ooh. The gore was amazing. And, okay, this movie came out in 2017, mm-hmm. so it is now five years old. So I think we're okay to give some spoilers away. That murder scene was, it was graphic, it was gory, but it was brutal. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen tons of murder scenes in movies. We watch horror, that's what happens. This was one of the most visceral and brutal murder scenes I had seen in a recent film. And it felt so real. Because it wasn't just, he comes in, stab, 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 she's done. It was stab, victims fighting back, victims thrashing around, trying to get free. I'm like, typically what would happen? And it made for a very sloppy murder. Yes. Yes. And I also didn't like the fact that they shoved a cow down a well to cover it up. Yeah. That cow did nothing. And the sheriff didn't even look, so it was for nothing. 
yeah, sheriff didn't take a look. He's like, you want to come back and see the well that we're filling in after the cow fell in? Nah, I take your word for it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, 1922, I could have went on a murder spree and just buried people in wells and filled it with dirt, and I would have been fine. Yeah, well, I mean, spoilers. I mean, so, as far as forensics go, they just found some random dead woman in a ditch, and they were like, um, did she have some missing back teeth? Yeah. Yeah, she did. Oh, look, there's, there's your wife. She got robbed. <laughs> But if you notice, it wasn't even like he went, yeah, he just kind of subtly nodded, like, yeah, like, he didn't want to say it, but he was like, if I don't, that's gonna, that's gonna bring suspicion around me. Yeah. So I'm just gonna nod and be like, yeah. Yep. And Thomas Jane gave a hell of a performance. I don't know how someone can, A, be the Punisher and be sort of a badass, and yes, I still like the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. I think he's a great Punisher. Uh, John Bernthal from the Netflix series has surpassed him, but not by much in my eyes. If you don't like it, come fight me. Look at my info and fight me, Who's damn it. Who's gonna come fight you oh, about Oh, nobody. This. I just like saying that. <laughs> but he looks so haggard and grizzled from working that farmland. He definitely was the character. Like, perpetually tanned and leathery looking. I'm like... I was like, dude, you are not just an actor. You are, like, one of those method actors. Because I wouldn't be surprised if you were out working farmland with somebody to figure out exactly what you needed to do and how to carry yourself and talk and all that. Yeah. It was really good. I enjoyed it. I'm glad you I'm glad you liked it. Is there anything else you've been doing, watching, playing? No. Singing? No. No? No. Well, in other news, I have... (laughs) Now we're on to me, because it's about my ego now. (laughs) I'm kidding. I've watched eight movies so far, which isn't too bad. We're 16 days into the new year. Eight movies. You know, it's not too bad. So I started off by watching Critters from 1986. Then the Lego Batman movie, which actually I think you would appreciate. It was pretty fun. Yeah? Yeah. I do like the Lego games. I've watched Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2, which I actually really enjoyed. And the fact that they have a little girl just cussing and calling people cunts and motherfuckers. I'm in The Dark Tower, which was fine. I've never read any of the Dark Tower books by Stephen King, so I went into the movie with zero expectations. I was like, "Eh, this isn't bad. So yeah, Dark Tower wasn't bad. Then I saw The Eternals which came out this year, just hit Disney+. Plus. It was fine. Different style of Marvel movie. So it's not Spider-Man or Iron Man or Avengers. Was that the one with Angelina Jolie? Yes. Different. I liked it. It was like how Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings was different from all the other Marvel films, to me. There's something different, so I'm like, I like a change of pace. Not everything has to be... 100% comic book superhero type stuff. And I, yes, I know they're from comics. I don't read a whole lot of comics. I dabble every now and then. So I don't know about the Eternals. I don't know their backstory. But I went in with zero expectations and I enjoyed myself. The fight scenes were really well done. And it's it's shot beautifully. It's actually a really gorgeous looking film. And then last night I watched Stitches from 2012 about a clown who gets murdered at a birthday party full of kids and then comes back six years later for vengeance. And it's actually really fun. It's an Irish film. I think you would actually enjoy that one. Probably. Yeah. It's got really good gore effects. Nice. And unique kills. Ooh. Yes. After how many movies have the same, uh, stab in the eye, uh, uh, uh. and the next person, stab in the other eye, uh, uh, uh. I mean, this was 2012, so we're talking 10 years ago, but for me, unique kills. And then 1922. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so I'm starting off on a good pace for recording on Letterboxd. And that's about it. I haven't done really anything else. Haven't done any reading. Had to miss a week of work because my manager tested positive for COVID. Yeah, a lot of our employees at my work were out for literally an entire week. 
And I was, I, I didn't know what was going on because I assumed people quit. Did they get fired? What happened? Half of our team is completely gone. And, and then I saw a piece of paper, uh, I think it was on Friday. I saw a piece of paper on the, on a desk off to the side, not for our shift that told everyone to, instead of clock out, go outside to get tested. Wow. Not our shift, not my shift. And this past week, my cube mate that sits right next to me, she confirmed that the reason she was out sick was she had Omicron. Wow. Yep. Transparency. Just let the people know if they've possibly been exposed. Yeah. It's one thing I'll say. At least my work let me know. My manager was like, hey, take a few days. I was exposed. I'm waiting for my test. And within an hour, he texted me back saying, hey, it's positive. Just I'll be back in a week. You don't need to go in. And the only reason for that being is I'm still training for the stuff he's wanting me to do. And there's no one else that can really train me the way he wants me to be trained. So, unfortunately, I had to miss five days, but it is what it is. The pandemic is still very much real, and there's a resurgence. We're not going to get into all that, but guys, be safe. Do the right thing, please. Lives are on the line. It's the most I'm going to say. So now that we've done our political fair for the week... Which I don't understand how it's political, but everyone keeps saying it's political, but what the fuck ever! You know, every, everyone will say it's political. I say it because they'd be like, you were talking about politics. I'm like, no, I was talking about healthcare and being smart, but you know. Yeah. No, talking about politics is not something I want to do ever on this show. If it ever comes up, if I ever start bringing up politics, Leanne... You have permission to take this microphone and in the words of The Rock at the height of his popularity in the WWF, yeah, I said F, you can take this microphone, shine it up real nice, turn that bitch sideways and stick it straight up my candy ass. Okay. Your silence speaks volumes. I, I had so many. Watching. I had so many questions running in my head, like <laughs> with the whole like <laughs> when you were talking about eggs and boiling them in the previous episode. I was like, "What's going on right now?" My mind oh, has so man. many questions. <laughs> oh hell yeah, you got damn right. <laughs> oh man, I've been watching. Oh yeah, I've been watching a lot of wrestling too. Anything that is AEW not abnormal. Out, it is not. It is not. And I'm loving it. I mean, we fucking had Brody King show up finally as part of the House of Black with Malachi Black. It's fucking amazing. I don't know a lot about the guy, but I've seen some of his matches. He's a fucking beast. I'm excited. So anyway, down to brass tacks. Let's cut to the chase. Let's get to why we're here. We're going to be watching The Platform. I'm the so excited. Earlier. Do you know what year this is from? No. I don't want to look at the in at the description, so if you can take hold of the remote here. Sure. And press select. Da, 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 2019? Okay. No, so wait. Yeah. I think it's 2019. I don't have my glasses on. I'm blocking the description. 2019. <laughs> okay. I just want to give everyone a feel for what year this came out. So 2019. You can you can look at the description. It's actually shorter than I thought it would be. Okay. Well, I've already decided not to. So it is 2019. Would you like me to read the description so people know? <laughs> I was just about to. A slap of food descends floor by floor in a prison. The inmates above eat heartily, leaving those below starving and desperate. A rebellion is imminent. Ooh. It's so good. Ooh. It's so good. That sounds very intriguing. It sounds like there might be some cannibalism on board, but don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some fucked up shit. Fuck yeah. Now, if you have Netflix, it's one of those Netflix originals or Netflix films. Uh, you can probably find it in their bullshit category of blockbusters 
Or you can use search function. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I don't like when they put their own films that they've purchased or produced under blockbusters with legitimate theatrical releases that have broken the block or busted the block, Mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You want to do that? Then show me how many views equate to the same dollar amount as, say, an Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, or Titanic. It's their service. They can do whatever they want. Well, they need to make it more adaptable or for me. Or what, Jeff? You're just going to stop watching Netflix? Oh, I could. Yeah. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Snap of my fingers, I could cancel that account. Until you want to watch the platform. Yeah, or until I want to watch season five of Cobra Kai. Oh, we did watch season four of Cobra Kai, but we'll touch on that later. <laughs> We're getting to the platform. <laughs> so you guys know how this Fuck goes. Fuck Cobra Kai. Fuck it. Fuck it in its ass. Well, yeah, we're more Eagle Fang over here. Oh my god, no! Whatever, I don't we're care. Not... I don't care. I am not emotionally <laughs> invested. Psh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> I, t- Cobra Kai I technically am, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we both are. We love it. Enough said about that. You guys know how this works. We're going to start the movie, we'll break back in every 15 minutes, give you our stream of consciousness thoughts, and then by the end, we'll give you our overall take on the movie. Yeah. So, Leanne, I'm going to ask you this. Are you ready for the platform? I don't know why I said it like a reality game show host, but... I don't know why you're asking me if I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to start the platform so I can watch it now? (laughs) Yes. All right. We'll talk to you guys in just a bit. So we are the first 15 minutes into the platform, or as they say in the movie, El Oyo. And I have a question for you, Jeff. Shoot. Does the main character look familiar? He does, but I can't place him. I know I've seen him somewhere. You have. I'll give you a, I'll give you a hint that probably but won't work. Uno. Dos. Pan's Labyrinth. He's the oh, guy that stutters. Are you? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because this film, I think, is a Spain production in association, apparently, with Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah. So it all comes back to Cobra Kai. <laughs> Goddamn Cobra Kai. <laughs> now, just to let you guys know, normally I would play a trailer before we get into our review here and doing what we do. But because it's in Spanish, it might be hard to discern what's happening. So I'm not going to play a trailer this time. It is subtitled. And I like foreign films. And so far, this one is already got me got me hooked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like the opening premise where we're seeing all this luxurious food in this really extravagant kitchen. And then we cut to... They're not necessarily prisoners because our main character volunteered for this program. And then we just found out his cellmate killed a guy and was given a choice between going to a psychiatric hospital or the the hole. hole. It's like, ooh, okay. (laughs) Don't know why you wouldn't choose the hospital, but maybe the hospitals are more fucked up than the hole. I don't know. But it's interesting that all they get to eat are the scraps from the people above them. What level are they on right now? 48. (laughs) Forty-eight. <laughs> yeah. I know some Spanish people. And you'll learn that is a good level. Yes. Apparently it's a good level. Yeah, it's it's already seeming pretty messed up. But I'm just wondering how much more messed up it's going to get. Yeah. It's basically we learned that, look, there'll probably be more food when it gets to us when more people are gone. I'm assuming he means they're just going to die off whatever 
It's interesting. We're already seeing the socio... uh, I don't know how to put it, but basically the older gentleman he's with that is a prisoner, once he gets done eating and the food starts to drop, he spits on the food. For the people below, and our main character asks him, why'd you do that? He goes, for the ones down below to eat. He goes, how do you know the ones above us haven't? He goes, they probably did. Bastards. (laughs) Bastards. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's a really kind of crazy look into socioeconomic status based on just what level you're on in this facility, we'll call it. Because it doesn't really seem like a prison. It doesn't seem like anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Because originally I thought, okay, maybe it's sort of like Cube. Not really. Because you're only stuck in one place. You can't move from place to place and try to figure things out and dodge traps. The only one thing is, don't keep food on you or they'll crank up the heat until you're burned to a crisp. The food is only yours while the platform is in front of you. Yeah. On your level. That's pretty fucking twisted. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm on board to see where this goes. I'm so glad. Yeah. Because you never, you never know. You first get into something, you're like, okay, usually in the first 15 minutes of a movie, you're like, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. Mm-hmm. I'm in. I am so in. I'm so happy. And you notice I'm not giving a play-by-play breakdown of what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> yeah, so I'm enjoying it so far, and I think we're going to go ahead and dive back in, and we'll talk to you guys in just a minute. you have anything else you want to add, Leanne? That I want to murder our neighbor's dog? No. (laughs) And with that barking, we'll talk to you guys in a minute. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. I'm loving this goddamn movie. (laughs) Yeah. It is even more twisted and not just by whoever's running the facility. It's the people inside who have no problem doing whatever it takes to survive. We've seen our guys a passage of time. They were getting along, eating the scraps, doing whatever they could, naked yoga at one point together. Yeah. (laughs) And then we see they get moved to another level further down. 132. 171. I mean 171. Yeah, the, the old man was on 132 at one point and told him, you don't want right. to be lower. There was no food. Mm-hmm. And he's he's tied up, our main character, to the bed, basically telling him, like, look, I'm going to have to do what I have to do. You're younger and stronger, so you'll survive. But I'm going to cut you up to sur- to eat. I'll feed you some of yourself to survive. I only have less than a month left in here because I've been here for a year. But you'll be fine. Like, that kind of just matter-of-fact thinking is so fucked up. I'm loving it. We also came across a new character. Oh, yeah. the, The woman looking for her son. So we see the platform come down one day. Random woman just sitting on top of the food. And we're told, oh yeah, she comes out once a month looking for a little boy. And our main character goes, wait, are there children in the hole? And the old guy's just shoveling in food going, I don't know. It's like, that's even more twisted if there are children in this facility. Okay, and as twisted as it may sound, I want to see that movie now. I want to see the children (laughs) if they're in here. Because that's like some Lord of the Fly shit amped up to like level 100. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's looking for a little boy and just rides the platform down each level. She went down to the level below 48. 
and was... They tried to have their way with her. <laughs> yeah, forcibly taken off the table and our main character screaming, let her go, don't do this. And the old guy's like, oh, they'll just keep her for a couple of days and then send her on her way. Okay. That's fucked. But um, she turns out to be kind of a badass because she just walks back into frame and sits back down on the platform, looks up at him like, yeah, I don't take no shit. So if we've learned anything from any of these movies, and I'm going to say recently because I watched it not long ago, Aliens, don't fuck with a mother. A mother's vengeance is not to be fucked with. You will die. Yeah, overall, I'm really excited that you picked this because this is so good. <laughs> it's really good. It's so good. Uh, I, I want to know where it goes. I'm... I'm kind of hoping we don't get some kind of conclusive ending that it's just kind of like, well, here's what happens. Who else goes in next? That's kind of where I want it to go, but I don't know. I don't know where it's going. We've also found out that the old guy has not killed anyone in there, but he ate human flesh because a body came down mutilated. He was like, well, hey, what, what else are we going to do? We have to eat to survive. He goes, we can go quite a bit without food, but when that's presented to you, why not? Like, dude, it's fucked up, and I love it. I keep saying that, but I really do. This is so good. Ugh. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Oh, I just, I want to know where it goes. Like, I know it's an hour and a half movie, and I want to get to the end, but I'm enjoying their journey. But a part of me just wants to see where it ends. Um, that's the sign of a movie I'm really into. If I'm like, I just want to get to the end and see what happens. That's, I'm really into it. Good. Anything else you want to say? Because I've gushed. <laughs> no. <already>. No. <laughs> All right. We're going to get back to this. I'm probably going to have some sort of religious experience watching this or sexual experience. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen. It's the and, old men, right? The naked <laughs> old men. I mean pretty hot <laughs> if you like short round old men <laughs> which apparently is my thing anyway <laughs> we'll see you guys in just a few minutes It's refreshment time, folks. Taste that beats the others. Go, Pepsi pours it on. Taste that beats the others. Go, Pepsi pours it on. And we're back. And it's getting brutal. Oh, oh, oh man. I, I can't even describe what we saw. Okay, so he did have a roommate. Right, the old man. And what happened with him? Well, first, I don't think we mentioned they each got to bring in one item. So our main character brought in the book Don Quixote. The old man pulled a story about watching infomercials about knife sharpeners and knives, so he brought his Samurai Plus knife. Fucking crazy bastard. So anyway, after, I'm assuming, days... Of there being no food sent to level 171. The old man just finally said, Alright dude, we're going to do this. I'm going to start cutting you up and I need to eat. Puts a gag in his mouth and just like, you know, bear with me. I won't touch your genitals. Like, <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> thanks, because I'll need that when I'm bleeding out from you skinning me alive. And just as the old man starts cutting in... Our old friend, the woman looking for her son, is riding on the platform, and she takes out the old man. What, cracks him in the head with a wine bottle, stabs him in the throat with his own knife, and then our main character finishes him off. She she frees the main character from all of his bindings, and then the main character just kind of goes berserk on this old guy's throat. <laughs> yeah, just... I couldn't really tell if he was stabbing or just holding the knife and punching his face in. You couldn't really tell, but it was... Brutal. It was pretty meaty. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he's surviving on remnants of the old man. This woman took care of him for a little bit while she was there, feeding him, getting him water. Kind of like a mama bird and a little baby bird. Yeah. <laughs> like they had a mutual understanding because he said, I want to help her in the beginning when she first showed up. And then she just got on the platform and was like, I'm taking the knife and I'm going further down. It's like, okay, now she's got a knife and nobody's going to fuck with her even more now. Yep. And then they had to, it was time to change levels. Yeah. And now he's in level 33 with a new roommate who turned out to be the admin clerk who filled out his paperwork for his voluntary assignment to the hole. Yeah. And she also volunteered to go in. And she's trying to bring rational thought to a bunch of people who are barely surviving. You need to ration out the food, telling people below, just eat what you need. And they're like, bitch, fuck we you. were further <laughs> down. We, it's a miracle we're alive. We're eating whatever the fuck we want. And she brought her little wiener dog with her. One day her dog eats, the next day she eats. That's how they ration it out. And he's like, Phew. our main character is like, yeah, well, okay. We'll see how far that goes. Not so much in words, but with his facial expression. Like, yeah, okay. And she has a lot of information and she's insisting that there are no children. We find out it's a 200 level facility vertical self-correction facility that's a very we're upper class we want to correct the lower class citizens who go in here kind of name <sighs> to me anyway yeah she reiterates several times under 16s are not allowed and he's adamant that no there's a child in here as we know there's a woman looking for her son it's it's getting even more nuts because we get a little bit more information but it's not enough to really tell you what's going on it almost seems like those that volunteer it's like well if you don't mentally break and you survive you'll get something out of it like our main guy's gonna get an accredited diploma mm -hmm. like accredited in what not mutilating and eating your cellmate <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that's a good diploma to have to be honest I mean it could take you really far in life yeah write your own ticket and we're also finding out that the people who are making all of these dishes have to be very pristine it is it's it almost seems like a very high class restaurant yeah because we saw the man who was overseeing the chefs pull several of them aside and pull one singular hair off of this dish and compare it and then berate the person whose hair it was which, I'm all for that. I'm all for people not getting their hair in food as someone who's taken a bite of something and had a long-ass hair in it. And then decided to hair. throw out... Oh, it could have been. <laughs> you don't know what people are doing. I've thrown out the rest of my food, so I was like, well, I'm not hungry. So I appreciate that level of, there's a hair on this. Come here, I'm going to check and see. But you can tell if those people screw up more than once, they're probably thrown in the hole as well. Who knows? Uh, people jumping from the higher platforms because they can't take it. Oh, it. Oof. I'll say this. If you're someone who likes Cube and you like that sort of confinement and people losing their shit. A little bit I of torture. I think the platform is definitely something you would enjoy. I'm enjoying it. But we we got to watch more. So we're cutting this right now. We're getting back into it. And yeah, see you guys in a bit. Yum, yum. It's a meal in itself. Our all-meat super dog. Enjoy one now. Show starts in six minutes. All right, so the movie got really boring all of a sudden. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. It's, oh, there are some turns. We're seeing our main character go down an even worse rabbit hole with his mental state. He helped the woman looking for her child once again. She showed up on the platform, passed out. Turns out she doesn't have a kid and wanted to be an actress, according to the admin clerk who let her in. But she did kill the dog. That she did. Yeah, she killed the admin clerk's dog. 
we we get a bunch more information, but it's it's not really important to the story about the character and why she's in there. She had cancer, couldn't beat it, so she's like, just throw me in the hole, whatever. Well, she, her role is very important because we're learning that the information she was given is incorrect. Very true. Remember we said, turns out there were 200 levels? Uh, Homeboy ended up on fucking 202. And that's where we saw him start having visions of the old man. She hanged herself. Yeah. Right by the number 202. Right in front of it. And he's having these delusions in his head of her going, I left my body so you could eat me. That's why I didn't jump. You'd be able to sustain yourself on my body. Eat my body. Like, ugh. He was resorting to eating his book, trying to pass the time by taking a broken piece of a dish and scratching the walls. Mm-hmm. It's, he's, he's losing all mental faculties at this point. Yep. He's being broken down. Yep. And we know that this place is run by something called the Administration. Which is another one of those names for evil entity made up of rich people controlling the less fortunate, I feel. Yeah. There's always something in one of these shows, whether it's like a crime show or it's a horror thing. There's always some company like the company or the corporation, the administration. In The Purge, it's the new founding fathers. Oh, but dude, this is so good. Yeah, and so he just... Right now, we're an hour in, and he woke up from switching rooms again, and he's at, what, room eight? I think it's level six. Six. Okay. So he just woke up. Yeah. He's got a new roommate. We don't know who it is yet. But we saw, and I found this interesting. The food isn't prepared, like, for some high-class bunch of people above, and then it's slowly, like, brought in and lowered down. No, it's prepared for nobody at level zero. And then just sent down, like, we'll prepare all this fancy food and all these things. And each of these people going in get to say what their favorite food is because they'll put it on the menu. And this thing looks pristine and gorgeous on level zero. And then we see just how much carnage. Chaos. Anarchy. The visceral tearing of roasts and chickens and whatever else. The People food stomping being on the food. Yeah, exactly. It's it's insane. It gets better. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's keep going. What have we got? 30 minutes left? Yeah. Let's finish it out, and then we'll come back and give our overall thoughts. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we only got 30 minutes, so that would be one more a break. Lot, then... Honestly, a lot happens in the next 30 minutes. So do you think we should do I think we should do 15 and 15. Okay. You heard her. She calls the shots, guys. <laughs> Brother. Well, at least on this episode, because it's her movie she brought to the table. Yeah. All right. So we'll do another 15 minutes, and we'll talk to you right after. As everyone knows, rainbows usually have a treasure at the end. Let's follow this one and see if we can find the pot of gold. Brother, I suppose you've come to claim me treasure. Well, we'd like to see the gold first. Ethan, there's better than gold in here, me lad. No, no, just look here, no. Candy, refreshing soft drinks, popcorn, ice cream. Well, that's some treasure, but anyone can buy luscious treats like these at the snack bar. You don't tell me. Uh, do you suppose you could get me a job as a snack bar attendant? Show starts in five minutes. We went from about a 10 to an infinite level of what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. We've seen a guy try to climb up from level six to level five and get shit on. I believe his item was a rope. Yes, he was using a rope to try and climb up, and they shit in his face and laughed at him. Yep. And then proceeded to fuck. Loudly. <laughs> and our main character and his new roommate proceed to 
come up with a plan. They're going to fend off everyone on the higher levels and hand out food to everyone on the lower levels because our main character has deduced roughly that there's probably 250 levels based on the time it takes the platform to go down and return to the top. And carnage ensues. Yeah, and he meets people that he... uh, Not the main character, but his roommate. His roommate gets to a level where I guess his mentor is? Yeah, after running across some people that he spent time with before, we get to a level where there's a guy in a wheelchair. And he proceeds to tell him, it's not about just handing out the food, you have to deliver a message to level zero. Take one dish back completely untouched, and they'll understand. So now, not only are they on a mission to hand out food to lower levels, they're protecting one particular dish, the panna cotta. Yeah. And they are killing anyone who gets in the way until they reach a level where a guy has a fucking samurai sword. I think one guy even had a surfboard. Yeah, one guy had a surfboard. (laughs) I don't know why. So he could hide behind it, apparently. Yeah, they've been telling people back off. They've been handing out rations. They get to this level... And they see the woman looking for her child slash actress, who doesn't have a child, getting brutally stabbed. So our main character goes into hero mode and knocks that guy down. His new roommate jumps down and immediately gets confronted by a dude with a samurai sword. Hey, you're allowed to bring in one item. I guess samurai sword is definitely on the fucking list. Yep. And yeah, now they're in a fight to survive. Our new roommate has got sliced across the abdomen already. So I'm assuming either this guy's proficient with the sword or he's watched enough kung fu movies back in the day that he believes himself to be the master of the blade. Yeah. Holy fuck. I told you. Yeah. (laughs) No telling what's going to happen. I don't know where this is going to go. We've got 20 minutes left. Yeah. 20 minutes. We're watching that 20 minutes. We are not going to break with nope. a five-minute no. interval left no. and then be like, okay, <laughs> no, we we got to watch the last 20. Let's get into it because my mind is fucking spinning where this is going. I am so, so pleased. Oh, I, this is one Netflix needs to put out on Blu-ray, on physical media, so people can own it. Because I would buy it day one. For sure. To my collection. Absolutely. Because I want to be able to watch it again and again. Because eventually we all know Netflix is not going to exist. So people can shit on TikTok all they want, but guess what? <laughs> two good movies. Yep. If there's anything good to come from TikTok, it's at least two good movies. <laughs> yep. And I guess cat videos. <laughs> all right, we'll be back. To visit our snack bar and treat yourself to some delicious Castleberry's pit cooked barbecue sandwiches. Cook the Castleberry way slowly over open pits of glowing charcoal, then season with a sauce that's zesty, yet delightfully mild to please the entire family. Also at the snack bar, you'll find popcorn and soft drinks and candy and French fries to go with your Castleberry's barbecue sandwiches. There's plenty of time before the movie starts, so visit our snack bar right now for Castleberry's pit-cooked barbecue sandwiches. Well, all right, that just about does it for us here. We're going to wrap it up. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) Wow. Good, right? Yes. (laughs) Are you speechless? Yes. Wow. This movie has rendered me speechless. I don't want to give away anything else that happens because I think it's too much of a spoiler. Yeah. I just want to say it's worth a watch. Seek it out. If you have Netflix, (laughs) find it. The platform. It's it's really good. It's bonkers. The you get story to see is good. you get to see so many creative deaths. You get to see all these objects that people bring in. Yeah. This isn't much of a spoiler, but one guy brought in an inflatable pool. Yeah. I don't know why, but hey, you know, you can take whatever you want. Inflatable pool. Yeah. 
Not on the <laughs> list of banned items, apparently. <laughs> I, wow. Out of five wow. stars. Uh, ten. <laughs> I'll break the scale. Ten. Okay. Not only was the story good, and the acting was good, the effects, the gore effects... Blood spurting out of the neck. Oh, so many practical effects in this movie. I mean, we're not going to talk about how the food platform is magically levitating from floor to floor. Yeah, there's some weird shit going on. It's it's a feat of engineering I don't understand. The there's fact no wires or pulleys or mechanics. And you had brought up something that I was also thinking the first time I watched it mm -hmm. was the the dish that, that they were saying was the message. Right. When they land on that platform, you said it. You're like, okay, so did they just crush the dish? Like, what the heck? Yeah. I thought the same thing. I'm yeah, like, so I'm like what? Well, they just <laughs> collapse on it after their fight with these last two guys. I was like, okay, so did you just destroy your entire mission? No, it was secretly off to the side, apparently. Yeah, apparently it was fine, but... <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really matter in the end whether that dish survived or not. You'll realize that when you watch the movie. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I, I, Out of five stars, ten. Yes. <laughs> it broke my fucking scale. I don't normally rate things on stars. I mean, so many systems have stars. I'm like, okay, if I have to, but... Yeah, for this one time, 10. A 10 out of 5. <laughs> the math doesn't check out, but I highly, highly recommend you seek this out. I am so, so glad you liked it. <sighs> of course, I hate endings like that, but whatever. We're not going to talk about that. You and I like different endings, and right. I knew you would like this ending. This ending works for me because there's no telling what happens. Yeah. Did someone succeed in what they were doing, or is it just going to perpetuate the cycle? Who knows? You don't know. It, yeah. And the acting was really good, too. Really good. It's... We can say that his, his original roommate was with him throughout the entire thing. Yeah. As he said at one point, he goes basically told him you ate parts of me i'm with you forever i'm inside you now like ooh. <laughs> then when he kept having visions of his old man roommate and the admin clerk roommate he had they were both like we're in your head covering your ears doesn't shut us up mm -hmm. it's like just to see the mental breakdown of what this does to somebody and you see it in different people, how they all react. Yep. I mean, hell, the dude that brought the inflatable pool turned it into a gay bathhouse with his roommate. <laughs> they were just in there chilling, dongs floating in the water. Starving, but having a good time. Hey, you know what? More power to you. That's what you want to do? Go for it, man. I do not judge. <laughs> I will not judge. In that situation, do what you gotta do. If you gotta fuck the pillow, I don't care. I mean, we saw a scene where our main character was masturbating jerking off right, in, right towards the beginning. It's like, well, what am I going to do? Okay, I'll read. Okay, I'll do some stretching. Might as well rub one out. Got to pass the time. Yep. I definitely, definitely recommend you guys seek this out. It is really, really good. <laughs> I will say, if you're somebody that doesn't like watching a movie that is subtitled because it's in a foreign language, skip it. This ain't for you. We personally like subtitles we we like our foreign films yeah especially foreign horror films exactly i had to have the the subtitles on when i watched stitches because it was irish and some of those kids in that movie had heavy irish brogues so i couldn't quite make out certain words they said but other than that i didn't really need them but for this i don't speak fluent spanish so it helped I'm sure the translation wasn't exact because I was picking up on things that weren't exactly as what was said on screen, but I still got the gist of what they were saying. Exactly. So yeah, if you're one of those persons like, I don't want to read my movies, 
it's not for you. But for anyone else that doesn't care and is like, yeah, I'm down for it, watch this motherfucking movie. Watch it once. Then immediately go back and watch it again. And then after your second time, get some popcorn, microwave some burritos, grab a beer or a soda or water, whatever. Sit down and watch it a third time. Or if you want to be in tune with the movie, some wine. Yeah, just get a bottle of wine. Just don't crack it over the head of any old man that walks up to you, please. That's assault. You will get thrown in the hole. Could potentially be murder and you'll be in the hole. And who knows what fucking level you'll end up on. So yeah, I think we both highly recommend this movie. Absolutely. So that's that's gonna do it. That's yeah. our show. I mean, I can't say any more. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm gushing over this movie. It's dare I say almost a flawless movie. Except for the the one little dish we both assumed was smashed. Other than that, I would say it's flawless. I'm willing to overlook that considering everything else, but it was the first thing that popped in my mind when they both just kind of collapse in pain onto this platform. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I get you're in pain, but you're supposed to protect something. Yep. I mean, aside from yourselves, obviously. But, but anyway. It's good. It's great. Is it Skewered Universe approved? Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the platform, a Netflix film, is definitely... 100% motherfucking skewered universe fucking approved. Fucking. I'm swearing a lot. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> it's the sign of higher intelligence. Yeah, sure. When people swear a lot, they say it's a sign of high intelligence. They say it also helps with pain tolerance. Well, then I must be in a lot of pain after watching this movie. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Murphy. But anyway, that's going to do it. You know where to find us. Google. Uh, Apple Podcasts. I, I completely blanked for a second. Stitcher. We're on Amazon. Podbean. Podbean. YouTube. You can go there. YouTube if you want to watch the audio. I personally like that. I like being able to... Because I'm a captions girl. And the captions actually work pretty well. We tried it out. Yeah, it's Captions pretty are pretty spot on. Yeah. It censors, you know, my cursing. And you'll see it right here. Fuck, fuck, shit, fuck. Fuck, fuck, shit, fuck. See, it censored all that that you just saw on your screen on YouTube. Cunt shit, fuck face. Again, right there. See? See, loyal listener? That's what happened. <laughs> one one loyal listener. <laughs> one loyal listener. I don't know how many we have. We have over a thousand downloads. Hopefully we'll get more. But we, we do this out of fun. Yeah. If I get more listeners, great. Awesome. We welcome everyone to the Skewered Universe. Well... Maybe not everyone, but that's to be decided later, depending on how you act. I'm looking at you over there in the corner. Shape up. I don't know why I'm pointing randomly, but yeah, you. Stop doing that. Or keep doing it. Maybe we like it. You don't know. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have our Patreon. Skewered Universe Podcast at Patreon.com. We are soon going to have our Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight audio commentary up there. I almost said the Dark Knight, and I would do one for that, but I would just be talking about how much I love the movie and then break into, where is she, randomly throughout, or go line for line with the Joker's soliloquies throughout the movie. I don't know if we could do that one. Possibly if I keep myself in check. But anyway, that's where you can find us. The links will also be in the show notes. We're glad you guys were along for the ride. Before we sign off, Leanne, do you have anything else you'd like to say to the fine folks out there? Suck a bag of dicks! And with that, we're going to say keep enjoying that universe that's just a bit skewered. 
Check out Skewered Universe podcast at the following links. Skeweredhead.com, Facebook.com slash groups slash Skewered Universe podcast, SkeweredUniverse.podbean.com, Twitter at SkeweredU, Instagram, Skewered underscore Universe. Email the show at SkeweredUniversePodcast at gmail.com, Patreon, Patreon.com slash Skewered Universe podcast. Join our Patreon, go to Patreon.com slash Skewered Universe podcast to get access to exclusive bonus content such as Skewered Universe transmissions and audio commentary tracks.